And we're live. And we're hanging out. I'm Bear. <laughs> I'm Alan. Uh, if you like what you hear today, you can find more about us on our Facebook page, Hanging Out with Bear and Alan. You can join our group. And we launched a Patreon, Hanging Out Podcast. If you like what you hear, you can give us a dollar. We're uh, we're hanging <laughs> out with Dave Raposa today. <laughs> Hello. We're here with Dave Raposa. Well, how are you doing, Dave? I'm doing great. I'm... Uh trying to stay motivated just started doing some workout challenges and diet challenges and things and uh awesome trying to keep on schedule with work and all that so you know keeping the same pace definitely, every day definitely go back and listen to our first episode with mark chef and his crazy workout ideas oh, as yeah. freelancer fitness yeah we're actually um today we're about to like do something on our Twitch stream where we're announcing this challenge for the rest of the year for everybody to do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You tell us about it. Yeah, we're, we're pretty hyped about it. It's like, um, I mean, I don't want to just like totally take over, but do it. <laughs> no, nah, put, uh, put a plug in. It's called the Gauntlet of Goals. And you can check us out. We're, uh, we're Steve Lichman, or yeah, Steve Lichman on Twitch. So L I C H M A N. And, uh, we're doing this thing where like you map out on a, a spreadsheet like your day-to-day -day things that you do so you do diet fitness prosperity these are different columns one of them's lived my life which means <laughs> you did something <laughs> meaningful for wow. yourself. one of them's knowledge so it means that like you know you're reading or you're learning something new every day and then we have charitable deeds slash did something for someone i love <laughs> so being a nice person those are bonus points and then habits that you either want to break or habits that you want to start. That sounds Ooh, I like that one. nearly identical to what they tell you to do at AA. Yeah, I've never <laughs> been to AA because I never got that into alcohol. But like, I would imagine that this would be a good way to claw your way out. Yeah, I think it's. I think that you see those steps pop up everywhere. Like, if anyone's in a bog, whether it's alcohol or just a slump in art or life or anything, those are always like the steps. Well, what you do, like for me, like getting into like, let's just say a work pace for art. It's not just like working on art. Like that's never the case. That's not how life is. Like you can't compartmentalize like every section of what you do. So, you know, whatever you have as far as like a fitness for, fitness schedule for yourself or diet, whatever, like however nice you are to people that you meet. All that stuff like ends up coming back and reflecting on like how you work and how productive you are. Like if you're unhappy or you Absolutely. feel like crap or you're eating like crap, like it's going to affect how productive you are in the long term. Like no matter what, like you can't get away from that. So stuff like this, I feel like is, you know, just in terms of getting better, like you can say it's all about studying and things. But in reality, if you're not being better as a person in general, then it's not really going to help you. Like, right. Like you're, you're going to get burned out. You're going to lose energy or, you know, and then you get older and things start to fall apart anyway. So it's better <laughs> to hit it in the beginning while you're still, however old you are, because <laughs> you're younger than you're going to be. Definitely. Well, there's a, uh... That's an awesome idea to me because it's a, another community engagement thing that you're thrown out there. And yeah. I think that's how I found you, Dave, is uh, through your tutorials um, and through uh, Crimson Daggers online communities is where I first saw you work and kind of got drawn in. You've always been really yeah, active cool. there. Yeah, that stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's weird because we've kind of, uh, Dan and myself, like Dan Warren is the other person that I did like Crimson Daggers with for a long time and portfolio reviews and things like that. And it became so difficult to manage time to do that like for free, you know? And we didn't have right. any kind of like way of making it any money. So like it's either you do that all the time and offer something that's beneficial for everybody. But at the same time, it's like you're hurting yourself because you need some way to survive and this was like before patreon or any of that stuff so um now we're trying to get back to that the way it was like because i tried to do like the tutorial thing and i mean my tutorials are ridiculously long and like they are but they're great <laughs> i appreciate that like yeah like the 15 hour ones like i tried really hard i like wrote out a whole lesson plan and all that and i did like as much as I could to make that worth it. 
and then I was just trying to figure out ways of giving back as much value value as possible. But like, it's really difficult to do without some kind of, you know, compensation to survive. So now we have our books. And in that way, we get to be sponsored by ourselves. And then we have like our Twitch right. thing where people can subscribe. And, and now we're going to set a schedule starting today, actually, where we're going to do every Monday at a certain time, we'll, we'll be live and like, Dan's going to do portfolio reviews here and there and things like that. So we're trying to get more active now that we're kind of falling into a rhythm because we've done two books now and we, we understand our schedules a bit more. It's not Definitely. so chaotic. It's like, it's hard to get a handle on making your own things and, and maintaining like life and work, but we're slowly integrating like a pretty strict schedule so that everything that, happens. That's so weird to me that you, you're, you're almost done. I think you're, your second book is just getting printed and it's going to go out. I think I read sometime in March, yeah. April. I'm a backer, so I get the emails. Um, I appreciate it. The, the, um, what's crazy to me is that you say, oh yeah, we're, it's is after our second book and they're both huge projects. And you're like, yeah, we're, we're just now figuring out the whole time thing. Yeah, <laughs> really. That's what it takes. Cause you know, making a book is only one part of it. Like for anybody who wants to make a project, the the reality of it is that most of your time like uh, of course it will be spent making the thing but that's just one tiny part because then you have to make the thing in the factory you have to ship it around the world you have to find you know like you have to coordinate so many moving parts that that becomes a lot of what you do and getting that under control and having like a rhythm with that like it's it's not so bad to do the art side because i've been doing this for like 11 years yeah you know, being a freelancer so mm -hmm. it's like i i understand like having discipline and dedication to what i'm doing like that's not so crazy for me but what yeah. is crazy is like learning this whole new set of skills and to basically become a business where you do every single part that's what's uh, difficult more or less and what's like the learning curve so two books it's like we've only done it twice you know and we're still figuring it out still trying to find the best method well, that the books and the the 15 hour tutorials and the the time that you put into all that it feeds into the think the main idea here is on top of all of that you've also been doing insane amounts of client work too I can see in the beginning yeah, I mean, that, like this this podcast project is like an amateur project for us. We don't have a lot of client work now. Sure. But you've put out all that work and done client work on top of it. It's in and you have both sides now where you've made a poster digitally and someone else made it, but now you've made a book digitally and now you're having to make it yourself. Yeah. It's um you have a really uh strong perspective on this, I think, on how to manage those two fields. Yeah, I mean, I've done like at this point in you know my career or whatever it's like i've i've done pretty much every job you can do regarding <laughs> art and illustration like i've done everything and so like i have a kind of I, I i feel like i have a basic understanding of a lot of stuff and then like i started doing prints for conventions and things so like i got used to kind of like talking to people who do that sort of uh you know that side of it uh for a while and then just started kind of building out from there where like the last thing we did is we printed up like lunch boxes like custom tin lunch boxes that are like really fancy they don't have like stickers on them or anything like that like i've seen yeah that's printed directly onto like the steel and uh, oh wow yeah we, we did like a bunch of production stuff working with different um facilities and uh yeah, I've, I've gained a lot of experience doing that. And you kind of are on, like you're saying, like both sides of it. Like, yeah, I've done a lot of client print work, client products, toys, things like that. But like so doing your own is different. <laughs> so how do you like, how do you, because I think you were doing, you were working on like the Logan poster while you were doing Steve Lichman too. How do you manage those two things? Like what part of you was like, yeah, I'm going to do this and also do Steve Lichman, which is on a deadline. Um, I guess they're both on a deadline. Yeah, you, I mean, the real answer to that is probably just you make time. 
Like <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be honest with yourself. And it's something that you kind of learn going through freelance. If you're a freelancer is you have to be real with like, what do I actually do in a day? How do I actually spend my time? What do my hours look like? What could I be doing? What do I waste time doing? Do I go on Facebook? Do I look at Instagram while I'm taking a shit for too long? It's like, that's a lot of people. It's like, do you right. do, you know, all of these time wasting things? And what does that build up to? If you were to measure that time, what is that in hours in a day? And then it's like, if you can cut that down, like I do a thing now where I say, no matter what happens in the day, I'm done by six, six thirty. So like I set a timer for myself. I work for four hours straight. I know I can do that without burning out. I work for four hours straight. That means that means every time I'm moving my pencil, not like I sit at my desk and look at reference. I pause the timer for that. So I work for four hours. Once I hit the four hour mark, I take a break, I eat lunch, and then I do another four hours. So because of how I have my schedule set up, that means I'm done by six, six thirty, and then I can hang out with my wife and have a regular life like people are supposed to do. And then that makes it so I get a lot more done in that time. Because if you give yourself all day, you'll work all day. But if you give right. yourself eight hours, you'll work eight hours. And if you give yourself really tight constraints, then you'll work within those. But you have to be serious about it. And that's kind of how I manage time. It's like you get there's way more time in a day than you than you realize. And you can take advantage of that. And, you know, if you utilize that for a few months, you kind of start to realize what you're really capable of as far as production goes. So in terms of like balancing two projects, it ends up being like, yeah, maybe I'm not getting as much done on the book. But what's going to happen is potentially doing this poster is going to lead way more people back to my website and people are going to find me and then they're going to find the book anyway. And then that's more people who might want to read it. It's like everything like that. I don't count as taking time away. I count it as more of like right, an investment. Boosting right. the brand. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's like that, you know, that poster ended up in crazy places. It was like all around the world and in times square in New York and like just, it was everywhere. And I was, Super how was that for that. you? How, how did, did were you super stoked about that? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's super flattering because you're like, man, that's really weird. And like, I, that doesn't feel like <laughs> that should be happening to somebody who did like magic cards. Like, I don't know. It feels, it feels strange. I don't like, you don't, it's not really real. I don't know how to describe it. Like, I've had that experience before. Like, Something happens when like you're like coming up, like I did, like I started out doing client work for people, just like taking payments through PayPal and emailing people pictures. Like that's what I did. Like I didn't have like right. real, you know, like quote unquote real clients, mm -hmm. but like they're just personal projects for people. And that's how I got started. So it's like, you'd think it would be this big jump where you go like, wow, and something changes. But in reality, I don't know. It's weird. Like you'll talk to people that you like, I, I've worked with directors and stuff on like movies and you're on the phone with them and you're like talking right. to people that like you recognize and, but you don't really think about it like that. Like I just kind of think about it like when I'm doing it, it's work and it's not like a fan moment and I don't really get like that anyway, but it's, it's kind of just the job at the time. And then the only part that really, stands out i guess is when you see it in like a when you see the juxtaposition of your piece in a place because like yeah the Times square thing it's like i'm really flattered by that <laughs> but it doesn't really change how i feel about work or anything like that right, right? that's you know, still a piece that you spent 15 20 hours on to you yeah, yeah All you that. Go like that's yeah i remember when that happened yeah that's a thing i did <laughs> yeah like you think it's gonna be more than that it's all it's like the same thing that happens like when you put out a project like when we put out our first and now our second book it's like you think you're gonna feel a certain way like i heard louis ck talk about this where he talked about the forever empty feeling <laughs> and not not like it's not a negative thing for me like i don't feel like i'm forever empty but like i get that in the sense where you think you do these projects or things that are supposed to be big, but like, that's not what I remember. 
you know that's not what like impacts you in the day right like i think about i think about weird stuff like i think about like stuff that impacts me is like when i told some like big fat lady that she had really nice fingernails and she was like really happy that i said that like i weird stuff like that like sticks in my head <laughs> <laughs> and like accomplishments that i have don't so like i don't know what that means but i think it just means that i don't really care about what i do it's just like i think it just means you're a good dude hearing things like what you said about like that you you know watch like the crimson dagger stuff and like you recognize that we tried you know like that makes me happy yeah or, like, seeing my work it's like it's too it's too much of me and like right. I, don't, I don't care like who cares about that yeah well i think especially like at the the end of something for artists in particular it's very important to uh, subconsciously i think we step away from it once you've thrown something out of the door and, and you're done with it i think that no matter what happens after that no matter what fame or money it brings you you can't focus on it anymore you just have to get into the next thing yeah and you also get into the wrong idea that you think the end is the point but really it's like just the process of doing it and working with people like that's the fun part when it's done it's just a it's like yeah. a memory or something like it's nothing new that is what almost every artist we've talked to has said and i'm glad that you said it as well because it's very true i find the same joy from producing than i do when i finish something yeah yeah i mean 100 percent. like writing like writing the books that dan and i write like that's the funnest part is like just riffing and telling jokes and that's, talking shit to each other like, that's why i love reading steve lichman because it looks like a conversation bear and i would have on our days off it's just hilarious i can just imagine you like snickering while you're drawing it yeah <laughs> right like, I, yeah exactly like we it's funny when people who don't like comics read the comic because um, um dan has a personal trainer and he's <laughs> this like um ex uh i think he was a navy seal and um he doesn't have any kind of like i don't know he doesn't care about fantasy stuff but he like read it and then he came back to Dan and he was like, this is just like small town people. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's totally it relatable. Yeah. It's just people. It's just like about normal people doing boring stuff. Yeah. Well, so uh, a question I wanted to ask was Lichman, you know, that one panel, the, well, just fucking kill me then that has yeah. been every, 4chan, Tumblr, Reddit. I mean, you see that everywhere. And that's like the unique style that you've managed to produce. Do you think that that style has played a role in getting you more clients or comic clients? Like you did the Marvel posters that were kind of in the same style as Lichman. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not the style that's gotten us any kind of work. Um, really what's what's done a lot for us is the writing like right like we don't consider ourselves like phenomenal writers or anything like we don't really think like that like we've been writing together since we were kids but um in terms of like what it's done for us like we have a job right now with a really big client that we're super hyped about where we're writing like a whole campaign for them Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, like we get to advertise stuff like to the point where they get like like it's a huge opportunity. They get like a billion views a month and it's absurd. That's outstanding. They, they came to us because of Steve. They were like, <laughs> we really like the books or the book. And we were like, oh, OK, well, this is pretty surreal. What's happening right now? And, <laughs> and then from there, it was like, yeah, can you make something for us? We we're like, sure. And um, we've been working on that. And that's more or less what's happened is like we've kind of moved outside of being just like strictly, you know, like things that happen to us aren't necessarily related to art anymore. Like it, it doesn't really have anything to do with it. Like people don't right. care that much. So now mostly what happens is people are like, you know, if they're interested in that side of it, they're interested in like, can you do something like that for us? Like, can you make like, you know, like you're saying, like it became like a meme. It's like, mm -hmm. can you yeah. do something like that? Because obviously people like it if it's a meme. Like, people want to make memes. And, you know that yeah. what you're saying 
you know, I've been having the realization uh, that because when you look around at like artist alleys or like what gets popular, or who can mm-hmm. who who can really succeed from their art, you realize that technical ability really has nothing to do with it. I mean, it makes me no. so you're talking about like Dan Harmon and you it makes me think of a uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. It's like in college, they weren't like hugely amazing storytellers, but people connected with South Park and they thought it was hilarious and they put it on Comedy Central. It's the same thing with um, Rick and Morty. They just thought it was funny and then they sat in a room and wrote it while they were getting drunk. It was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, what, what ends up happening is like you realize over time, like it, it, it's super easy if you're an artist to get tunnel vision where you think that like the thing that you're doing, you know, is all that there is and you will dissuade yourself from doing things that maybe you want to do, but it doesn't fall into what you categorize yourself as. So you're like, I'm an artist. This is me. So you won't see other opportunities. It's like that thing. um, There's this thing that uh, this guy, David Allen, he did this where he said like, focus on everything in the room around you that's red. You know, think red and try to find it and you'll find it everywhere. But there was blue everywhere too. And like, <laughs> oh, that's kind of how you have to think about like what you do. It's like if you give yourself a goal and that's what you think you're going to do, you'll see opportunities everywhere in that. And you'll miss all the other opportunities that might have even been better for you because right. you weren't thinking of yourself in that context. So, like for us, it's like you see, like me and Dan, for instance, we would talk every day, like you were saying, like the way that you guys talk to each other, you're like, this is kind of what it feels like. It's like, yeah, we did that all the time. We just tell jokes. We just like riff on stuff. We'd make fun of what we were doing like all the time. Like that's what we had the most fun with. And it's like you're sitting there laughing and like it comes naturally to you and you think like, oh, I I love doing this. But what is that? And why couldn't that be what you do? And then you kind of have to take a step back and think like reevaluate what you're doing. Be like, well, maybe it doesn't matter if I have technical ability. Maybe that's not the point. And maybe most people don't care about that. Like you're saying, like you go right. to Artist Alley and you see these people and you go like, oh, well, they're not necessarily like these fine artists who are doing incredible works of realism. Like that's not what's happening. So what is it about that? And then you think, yeah, like it's more about being relatable to people. Mm-hmm. Like what do people go through? Like people want to be able to see themselves in whatever you do. It's really hard to do that. Unless you're like a great illustrator, you can do that in an image without context or like, you know, without right. without a story. But people want a story. I mean, like, think about what Stranger Things is. Like, Stranger Things isn't even that crazy. Like, Stranger Things, like, the monster design stinks. Like, it's nothing special. Mm-hmm. And then you yeah. have, like, the kids. The, and But it's like small town people dealing with this thing and, like, you get the vibe of other things that you've enjoyed that you can kind of like plug in and be like, Oh, this is kind of like the Goonies. It's kind of like this and that, whatever. But like really the reason it lives is just the characters. Like it's all about the character arcs. It's all about like what happens with the guy, Steve. You're like, Oh, I love what Steve did this season. Yeah. (laughs) And that's, that's what people hold on to. So if you can like realize that in your projects and you go, Oh, right. So if I'm having a lot of fun, talking to Dan and joking around and just doing this thing. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's like this high production quality thing, it's just, is this relatable? And then you'll get people. So that goes back to something else I wanted to ask, which it's a good lead in, which is, you know, when you were thinking of Steve Lichman, I mean, I know you were already doing like the Starville on Patreon, but when you were thinking of Steve Lichman, you weren't thinking like, Oh, we're having this big transcendental muse no. moment like we're not gonna have a big sh- like uh twist in the story like m night Shyamalan. so you're just writing about basic things that are relevant to you when you were doing it and when you were about to launch the kickstarter and when you were spending all this time on it were you scared <laughs> were you sitting around like will anyone like this i don't know no no, no. I mean, maybe that's i'm like um i'm confident to like a fault sometimes <laughs> I don't care. I don't I don't care what anybody else wants. It doesn't matter. It's and I think you have to be that way when you're making things. 
because it needs to feel like yourself because you can easily fall into the trap of what works what have i seen mm -hmm. whatever like but we didn't we don't read comics like we never really did anything like i don't know we, we didn't publish any books we didn't really we're not really into like i've never even read a book about comedy i've never read like a funny book <laughs> so like <laughs> i don't know what to do necessarily so it's just like let's just do conversations let's and i just followed a couple of things that i had heard other like uh people who write like people talking like interviews and stuff like i heard like one of the things i liked was um uh what louis ck said about uh writing his show because the show is super funny it's like he would say that pretty much what was there was like his first draft like every episode because it felt more like it felt like somebody thinking of it so right. it felt natural when you watched it and i really related to that i was like that sounds right so like even if what you're saying is wrong like even if the sentence sucks that's how people talk so it's like maybe we should just bs and just work through a story in improv so that's what like all our books are um like the, the scripts and stuff is just that but huh, right yeah it sounds like you focused on well whether you're aware of it or not but making something very relevant to just the normal person because we all think that we're crazy unique but there are other people with similar interests that's why we have friends you know right and then like, as I, an artist I use this example of this is a gross example but i'm going to use it anyway it's like do it as far as like something relatable, like something that nobody talks about, but everybody does. And the, the reason that that works is because all of your insecurities, everything that you feel weird about that you think nobody else is like, everybody's like that, or at least a huge portion of people are like if like guys can all relate to pissing on hardened shit in the toilet to make it go into the water. You know yep. what I mean? It's like, a lot of a lot of people do that it's gross but it's something totally. that's weirdly specific that like right. every guy would be like oh yeah i've probably done something like that like yeah. something gross it's like little things that everybody does are things that like even if you don't you don't assume everybody's gonna get it it's like they will get it because if it makes you and your friend laugh it makes a ton of people laugh especially if it actually makes you laugh. If you're trying to do something that like you saw in a movie, then it won't work. But like, if you're just being yourself, right. It has, it has to be that honest moment. Right. Like, that's what I mean about like the confidence thing It's like, you can't ask other people what to do. Like it doesn't work. Um, like I was saying the other day, like the, one of the best quotes about that is like the Ford, um, Henry Ford, Ford motor company. Mm -hmm. When he said that thing about, uh, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, just do what you think is something interesting. And, it, and if you love it, it's the same thing in a painting. Like, if you're doing a painting and you're not into it, nobody's into it. Like, people aren't going to like that painting. If, you're, if your investment into it is just kind of like nulled by your own insecurity or you're like trying to be somebody else or you're trying to like force anything then it won't really work like it won't resonate the same way a painting will if you have fun the whole time you're doing it then people will see that you had fun because it's actually in the work and yeah that yeah. translates through right so uh, i know some people that i've talked to lately that have trouble finding the thing in their art that resonates with them and that you just mentioned that you weren't a huge fantasy art fan you didn't read comics with dan where where do you where did you go for these inspirations i i can think of like the eyeball night being an original thing that you did where where do these ideas come from for you uh for everyone it's different but where where do you think you go for that well it's like a. it's not that it, we were like or i was never a fan i was never a fan of like all this stuff but i just didn't as far as like doing comics in the medium and then reading comics like, oh I right, really right. Do that. i had them but I, I was more of like a fan of the artwork and, and uh like for stuff like that i always grew up being a 
being huge into like uh castlevania you know like all the kind of video gamey things <laughs> from my childhood like i played you know the original nintendo i had a lot of like the instruction booklets and um in those you'd see like really cool artwork that isn't really around now but like they'd show like little vignettes of like illustrations um one that i can pull from is a uh, um the zelda manual yeah I think it's zelda 2 or something huh. but there's like some really or maybe not the manual maybe it's nintendo power or something i don't know wherever it was but there's like really beautiful illustrations and i used to have that stuff when i was a kid and like um I don't know a lot of like cover arty things and a lot of Japanese stuff. I was big into uh, design of you know like Yoshitaka Mano and like um, what's his face. I don't know lots of different people, but I, I was big into that. I got into like anime around that time when like yeah. Pokemon exploded, like really like started out. I was in like I don't know sixth grade or something like that, and or fifth, uh, probably younger than that, probably like fifth grade. Right. And um, it blew up and uh, anime became a big thing. It like started showing up over here, like on the this like the sci fi channel had this like anime block at like midnight and they showed Akira, Fatal Fury, the motion picture um, and then like a couple other ones. Like I think they showed Aeon Flux and like even Galleon or something. And I would like videotape. Right. Those. I mean, I would record those like with my VHS and uh, i would watch them over and over again and like and then i started going to the video store and like there was this place called hollywood video and it had like all of these imports and i was just so fucking hyped i just went through and i just rented like, <laughs> everything like one after the other and uh just ate that shit up and just drew i would i would literally pause it pause the tape and then draw from it like i would pause from the uh did i mean draw from the frames on the screen just like scenes yeah. I really liked, and they'd be like jittery, you know. But I would like fill uh, up whole notebooks with that. Yeah, the like games I played and the, yeah, the games I played and the anime I watched was totally based on how good was the artwork, and that was where my interest was. Yeah, yeah, and I did like, the same uh, thing. Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, I used to play final fantasy was everything you know when i was a kid and so i would always buy the guidebooks but i would never i wouldn't use them for the game i just wanted to look at the character art inside right like chrono trigger had some some nice character art in their guidebook but i i think on the other side of that was another game i forget what it was anyway chrono cross too oh yeah chrono cross, was awesome. <laughs> chrono cross. Yeah, but i loved like uh final fantasy tactics had some really really mm -hmm. nice characters anyway he, by the way um the dude who did um like one of my favorite art books even right now is like uh da -da 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 -da, what the fuck is it called it's the uh tactics ogre let us cling together if you look T that up for the art book it's incredible There's tactics some... ogre let us cling together that is his japanese title <laughs> Yes, it's very <laughs> Japanese, but the artwork is like it's not it's not like super anime or anything. It's just some awesome designs. <laughs> oh yeah. Well if you look at like the whoever they got for the original concept artist for Final Fantasies, don't look anything like Finnish Yeah, that's anime. um Is that a mono? Shitaka, a mono yeah. 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 One of my favorites. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna buy I'm gonna order that book today. You'll love <laughs> it. It's it's really great. Like it's it's actually like the designs in there are so solid. It's like a mix of Japanese and um, like European design and like cool. armor and things. It's kind of like um, a more subdued version of like what Monster Hunter designs are like. Which the Monster Hunter concept oh, art yeah. are actually amazing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we live in a in a really golden age. It's almost like to me sure. with the internet and art books coming out and more like the Japanese market getting more in tune with like European history. It, it's almost like the silk road for art because yeah. you can see all these different things at once, whether it's the past, whether it's other people. I mean, it's crazy. Well, dark souls in bloodborne, like they annihilate art direction. Like this, the designs of the world, the atmosphere. The, I mean, it's kind of like the best part about it is that you look at like the, the artwork itself and you're like, Oh, that's actually not that crazy. Like it's, it's just ideas. It's just good ideas. I like that. I also like that side of it that things don't have to be 
so incredibly technical because a lot of the stuff that I see or that I used to see, I think was really boring because it was more about like trying to be real and more about, you know, trying to like kind of push your limits of like your technical ability. Whereas right. a lot of these other games are more idea focused in the styles no, it's secondary to the execution become yeah. that way and that's even something i could point out and say steve lichman where if you drew realistic characters there it would be very boring and dry but <laughs> you use those contour lines and you fill it in with those vivid colors and it makes all the difference in the world yeah it's it's like a um, <laughs> yeah like we had a uh, brad rig like we thought it'd be really funny to do like realistic versions of them because they're so basic <laughs> right <laughs> and like brad rigney's paintings i don't know if you saw them yeah we've seen them started. they're so funny they're so stupid <laughs> they are i like the uh <laughs> the illithid the mind the flay yeah yes yeah, the, the, the mind flay is the best <laughs> yeah i love the dracula one for just yeah. how dumb it is it's just like a dad <laughs> in a halloween costume we were just telling him like make it the worst but be, <laughs> but be sincere when you do it like like don't don't try to be funny just try it's, to channel like 90s novel cover artists who like don't right. understand what cool is like do that extreme see realism. you you cool. approach this perfectly because most artists treat all of their pieces and characters as holy and you you're just you know it doesn't fucking matter i made it it's great it's fun have fun with it Oh, we just like we that's kind of our dream is to like bring on artists to make fun of us. Like that's all we want. <laughs> like, like we understand, like just make this like stupid. Like I don't like when people try to be funny. It's not funny when that happens. Like if you try to be funny in a painting, like look how silly goofy this is. It doesn't work. It's like you gotta be sincere. But sincerity is where the funniness comes from. It's like if you're real about it then that's what's funny about it it's the contrast of like you tried and you failed like that's what's funny totally but yeah like i love seeing that kind of thing and yeah we're not bold into anything we're not like you know hey you gotta respect it no it doesn't do <laughs> well that that this whole brings us to an interesting point where you've talked about your art being in times square we've talked about your books um, you've been on all sides that an illustrator can be on. How do you start setting goals and priorities with all of this going on? For, for you, someone so multi-talented and faceted, where do those come into play? Um, setting goals. Uh, well, I kind of like, I, I kind of try and work on myself in the projects that we do like the steve stuff is kind of perfect because because the drawings didn't matter like in the first book i i well let me say this first i wasn't very good at drawing before doing those books like right. i i wasn't able to really draw well like you know the same weaknesses that everybody has like hands and feet and whatever like i would see people like marco derjevic six more vodka and like see his pencils and and I've been to his studio and watched him draw and you just like you're, you're like wow like that he's just so like he doesn't even have to think about it and he's just he has these skills he's worked so hard at it and like he nails it every time and like that was always like a goal for me I wanted to be able to do that like to not have to hold back on my ideas to be like I'm not limited in my skills like I want that to be something I don't even think about and right like, and the problem with that is like, like, let's say you wanted to work on it and like, what would you do? You know, like I could, yeah, like technically I, I could just do studies every day, all day, but that would be boring for me. And like, I feel like I always need something to be like moving towards. And I feel like you can find creative solutions getting better. Like you don't just need to rely on, you know, saying like, I'm studying and then I'll do the fun stuff. It's like, no, like make studying fun. So the first thing I tried yeah. to do with that was like, I tried to do that star veil thing where I was like, maybe if I animated it, animated like anatomy, I could get better at it. If I were to like do things in motion. Since, 
Yeah, sense the movement of the muscles of the anatomy. Right. And then just get, you know, you have to draw it so many times anyway that you would get better because it would just be repetition. And um, so I did the comic-y stuff and then I was like, well, let's try real animation. And then I made like, a, I, I did a lot of stuff with that. I did like a short little like, I don't know, like a minute, a minute and something little trailer thing that's not yeah. finished. And there's nothing crazy, but like I, that was my first go at doing some kind of like animated thing and i was really doing it just well, to I'm sure that and i was thinking like well there's kind of no point to this because there's no like what what is this trailer for if there's no finished comic like what's the point <laughs> it's stupid so then when the steve stuff blew up um we put it on imager and it like got really big and people kept asking like is there going to be a printed version of this and i was like oh that would be really cool like I, would, I didn't even think you could do anything with this but like that's you know it's fun to do and you know and it's freeing where like if we were to do something real serious like something that was supposed to be cool you know then if you suck at drawing you're kind of falling short and it feels like low quality so i was like well in a comedy setting you can get away with that because you know it's funny to be the fat guy in a comedy <laughs> like it's funny to be like you know not ideal like you actually plays into the jokes a lot of the time so yeah like who cares if i suck at drawing like it doesn't matter and so going into the books it became like this perfect little place to grow where i didn't need to feel insecure or like make everything look perfect so i could just draw and draw and draw and at this point we've done 687 pages i think is the actual number and like that's wow. 687 comic pages a lot like it's a ton with the next, yeah. yeah with the next two books we're like on track to be right there with the bible the next <laughs> two books <laughs> yeah if, two more books yeah if we do that yeah, um we'll, we'll be better than jesus so uh, <laughs> how long does it take you to do a page to do a page i do yeah. three pages a day a day um, yeah, that's uh, sketching, inking, text, word bubbles, all that stuff. And you day. hand write the text? No, not anymore. That's um, it's well, I I made a font out of my handwriting. Okay. And then that's what's in the book now. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. So basically, now we're at a point where it's been all of that work and i've actually gotten better at drawing and that was a goal of mine and now i feel like i'm finally somewhat close like i don't have a problem drawing things in perspective for instance i can do full scenes with all this stuff and now i'm moving into things i've always wanted to do like i told you like i grew up watching like anime mm -hmm. and i was right. like why don't i take what i like that the best parts of anime to me like outlaw star akira like yes all these things like uh, i like the fatal fury motion picture like i always like that kind of style like i just take everything and mash it together for the next project we're doing and just do like a really cool comic like something that everybody's been waiting for like nobody's doing that kind of style anymore that like awesome i'm anime. waiting for it dave yeah that 90s anime is coming back and it's gonna be i want it outlaw like stars a, man. like the all-time favorites like here's the thing is like i know this is kind of a tangent but like here's the thing like people People who like anime, they don't really have anything that relates to them. Like, yeah, like you don't relate to Japanese high school life. Like, who are you kidding? No. Like, you, you don't relate to all this stuff. Like, so nobody's doing that here. And I was like, I just want to do that. Like, just do a really cool version and have it be here. Like, I want to be like a redneck anime. Like, absolutely. Where is that? That's why um, Cowboy Bebop is my favorite anime because mm -hmm. you don't have to know the culture in any way to get it. Right. Right. Like those end up being the most popular here. Well, but. you know, it can't, your idea cannot fail because animation is a proven success here with Family Guy and American Dad and Adult Swim. It's just tying it into the relevancy like we were talking before. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. I love it. <laughs> That's crazy, man. You're yeah. crazy. No, it's just you do what you like. Like, 
as long as you're as long as you're happy and you're doing what you want then it'll it'll work to some extent even if it doesn't work financially it'll work for you because you'll at least be doing something you're proud of and that's right. more important that's a and great if, point yeah and if you're smart then you can turn it into money <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the key mm -hmm. <laughs> so i never see you at conventions where are you at where am i yeah come to a convention again <laughs> i used to um i used to go to new york comic-con like every year i went i think maybe like three or four years in a row did and, you hmm? did you just not do well or no it did well did did really well just it's such a i don't know it was easier when i lived in boston to do that specific one mm, but right. now i'm in denver and uh i've been here for like uh maybe like five years or something yeah and uh I, I haven't had a table anywhere yet because we did like we did our first book and we were like yeah we should be at conventions like talking to people meeting people but it's just too hard it's like our work schedule is so insane because like we've been doing each one of these books in under a year and like i don't know if you know anything about book production but to, what to do like a 432 page mm -hmm. book in under a year is like nobody does that insane so you just want to die all the time when you're doing it because it's so hard that you're like i couldn't possibly like i feel like i'm trying to be so efficient that i couldn't possibly do anything else and to make time to go to a convention because like we get online sales fairly often like we will do conventions but for now it's like it's not stopping us and we're, we're on such a good roll that we're trying to get like our main trilogy done and then hopefully from there start doing more publicity stuff but right yeah we're we're trying our best it's just like it's so hard to justify it like unless you well, have stuff to like i don't know unless it's unless it's easy like if there's some way to make it happen where it's manageable maybe but like our books are hardcover books they're like pretty heavy like how do i how do i get them to new york you know what i mean like i'd yeah. have to ship them there it would cost a shitload of money and it's like it's just you make up for the interaction with how much you and dan do online with twitch and the youtube streams i mean y'all y'all have a heavy online interaction mm -hmm. that covers for not going to conventions yeah like so, we should balance it with real life <laughs> so you had i was looking the other day you still I, I don't know if you've posted in a while you still have the starvel patreon up have you ever thought of doing a La lichman patreon no we we were playing with that but like the the way i see it is like i like that it feels small you know like i i like that steve thing is like once every once in a while it'll happen and people right. can pre-order it and it feels better that way and also it's incentive because like i like running out of money i like, <laughs> like i like some push you know and I need that motivation and I, and I need that pressure from people. Like some people, I guess just don't give a shit about that. Cause how many Kickstarters fail, but like, I really enjoy that back and forth. Like I like when we get money up front and it's like, you know, we have this chunk of book done and it's like, finish it and then print it. And you have that deadline now of like, you can't miss this and you can't let people down and that kind of pressure is so positive and that's kind of why everything happens the way that it does and like you're able to get stuff done so fast so if it were a patreon and it were like a slow build of money like i see how that goes where people only do like one issue like every two weeks or something of their comic because of that and it's like you're not getting anything done yeah like <laughs> mac i think it's max have you seen scurry that comic yeah. account he does i mean that is really detailed uh, yeah, that, art that's that he a does crazy undertaking and he only does like one to two pages a week i can understand that one because yeah, it's pretty I, I get that i get what he's building and it's mm -hmm. he values that quality quite a bit and but, 
for us like we're just content like we're just like right. whatever the joke is so if we have that written yeah. it's like just get it out yeah that's a good way to do it i think yeah i mean motivation Keeps it personal at least i can empathize with that uh with what you're saying about feeling pressure you know when i get a commission that's like oh yeah this like right now if someone it's like, oh, yeah, it's due in April. You know, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about it. Then I, you know, I feel kind of sluggish about the art. But if someone calls me tomorrow and is like, we really need this done in a week, I'm like, this is going to be the best painting I do all year. Right. <laughs> That's, um, I forget the name of that. It's like the something distribution. It's an actual law of like... Occam's Razor? Maybe. It's the, uh, you'll fill the time allotted for the completion of the project, whatever. It's like, right. that's kind of the same thing I was saying about or, yeah. setting times for yourself. It's like, yeah, when people give you like these huge windows, like I did um, that Logan poster in two weeks, something like that. And like, that's really tight deadline or something of that because everybody has to sign off on it. Like all the actors, the actors, agents, the director, the, you know, the producers, and then like, uh, my art director did, and then the person underneath them <laughs> like everybody did you have to, to like go through many story. revisions or yeah, what does you... that look like do people yell at you was that set? oh dude it's like pure chaos really <laughs> how many revisions are we looking at here tons I, I don't remember how many it was it was like every day for a little while i remember a while back there was this thing going around out the guy that they had hired the illustrator they hired to redo the little debbie logo mm -hmm. and i think he told in the interview he said something like i had to repaint little debbie like 17 times and they only changed like the colors of her freckles a little bit right. and he, he was so upset about it well i don't get a it doesn't bother me like i get it and i don't i don't have pride in that way about like work for somebody it's like if you're gonna pay me a bunch of money to do something like that then you're gonna get my time if you want right. to pay me more for my time then that's on you and i'm super happy to do that i'll do whatever you want this that's is this is your thing first i'll put everything i can to make it cool and then whatever <laughs> you want to do is fine because who cares that's, it's client <laughs> that's a, work that's a good way to look at it i've heard of artists refusing to do revisions but i mean yeah, that's that's not what you should do would you do the would you have the same mindset if you were working traditionally like if you're painting in oils would you i mean make i wouldn't them? it's not smart but right yes i i would because it, it's like what are you doing then quit if you don't like working for people then quit i mean the the i guess the thing that i that i feel like I'm not missing is like purpose. So, you know, I have that, like we have projects that, you know, me and Dan are doing stuff. Like we have tons of things going on all the time. We have like, you know, our, we have an agent and he like offers us stuff a lot. And like, we have, we have phone meetings with all kinds of cool people and development right. things. And, and I'm like fulfilled in that sense. So when I work for a client, it's like, I'm not, it isn't it isn't my identity to do that kind of work hmm. so i don't feel like i need to fight there that's not my fight if somebody wants to do that with the thing that i love and they tried to tell me it's wrong like if we had a publisher and they tried to like come at us and say that like no you can't say that i'd be like well that's ridiculous like we're going to do that like this is us like that's dumb if that were the case then i would fight back but like if somebody's going to offer you money to do something that, you know, is created out of thin air, <laughs> like you, you're not owed anything, you know, like they yeah. don't need to respect you in that sense. It's like I've had people say crazy shit to me, <laughs> work, like just crazy, like roasting my artwork. Give me one. I want to hear. I look small... like I'm taking a shit in this picture. Um, <laughs> like, can you maybe change that? <laughs> like, all kinds of stuff like that. Like it's way worse than that. But like, I don't care. It's like you just let it roll off the back. It's like I've made fun of so many people in my life, and I'm like, yeah, just who cares? Just, let's do it. 
Well, that's the offended. thing, though, right? Like that client work, it's not your work. It's just something you're getting paid for. And of course, you want it to look good. But at the end of the day, it's not totally representative of what you're trying to do. No, it's not going to like change my life if this thing is whatever. Like, it, no, like I can tell you right now, like the thing that we're doing that I mentioned earlier, where we got hired to do what we do, mm -hmm. like for ourselves anyway. Like in that sense, um, when they come back with revisions, it's like it just even then it becomes your goal to take what they said and make it as cool as possible. Like you right. always want to take the positive approach to revisions, no matter what happens. It's like maybe their idea is shit, but, but that's what they want. Yeah. And also what what can you do to make it not shit like? If you know that it's going to be a thing that won't work, it's like mm, your challenge is to make it work. That's what you're hmm. doing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, not to fight it. Right. It's like, so make it work. Somebody gave you an opportunity. They're depending on you and they gave you their money. Don't let them down. It's, a, you know, so Dave, more work. <laughs> did you ever have a representative or an agency or was this, is this all been something you've done on your own? Yeah. How did you get started? Uh, I got started, like I, I mentioned before, about doing like the PayPal stuff with like random clients. Right. Like people yeah, would just, just little stuff like that. Yeah, like in forums and things. Like I I leveraged all of those jobs to well, like let's say like out of all the jobs I get, right? They'll be like some are sci fi, some are fantasy, some are whatever. In the beginning, all of right. those worth doing i'm like yeah i'll do anything because i don't have any kind of grounding I, I don't have a reputation or whatever mm -hmm. i don't have an identity so it's like i took any job as it goes i start to have an idea of what i want to do I've, I've done some of this i've done some of that it's like well what is something i can do what's something where when i look at the artwork i go i'm not so far from that and that was like D D. I was like <laughs> that looks like professional work but it's not like it's not impossible there's yeah. anatomy flaws there's like problems with the rendering like there's all kinds of issues with some of them i'm like i could maybe do that if i worked really hard so what i would then do is i would find those artists and i would copy their work i'd like put it in another window and i'd be like okay i'm not going to stop till i'm at least this good so even if the clients i'm getting right now they don't pay me anything but I'm doing fantasy for them. I'm doing fantasy for these people and I'm getting paid through PayPal, but they're not paying me <laughs> jack shit. But the point is, is that like, yeah, I'm not just gonna do the time I'm worth in this painting I'm doing because it's hardly anything. Because if that's all I ever did in the beginning, I would never get anywhere. I would never right. move past where I was at. So it's like, you can't have that false sense of pride. It's like, you haven't earned it yet. You haven't earned the right to make those kind of choices. It's like, no. You're really going to have to sweat bullets for a little while right. and hardly make anything because you're building a foundation. You don't have a foundation. You're making that right now. So what I would do is I'd put up that D&D &D artist and I'd paint as if I were working for D&D &D for these people. And then from there, I would start to slowly build a portfolio over time. And then I would use those images to apply for D&D. &D. I'd reach out to the art director and then I'd ask them for work and, you know, send them my stuff. And if they were like, oh, you're really close and whatever. So I would t I would send that same person another update with a whole new portfolio as soon as I could. And hmm. just to show that I was like persistent, like, no, I really right. want it. And then they you're give you a chance after not only developing, but you're working quickly. Right. And they can see it and they go like, OK, I took everything you said and this is what I came up with. And then they go, oh cool like you know maybe i could actually give this some give this person some work and they deliver on time so then you get your first job when you get your first job you then want to work as if you know same idea you're working for the next job so like i worked as if i were working for magic the gathering on these ones and i pushed myself really hard again not even thinking of the money because that doesn't matter yet you, you don't have that luxury you so, know you were the third artist I think on this show that has told us that you you paint for the next painting right so 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a huge part of it because if you sit still, like the problem I have with classroom settings is that you're you're going to run as fast as the person next to you. And you don't just want to be the best person in your class, in your little world, in your hometown. You want to be the one of the best in the world in this little industry. So compare yourself yeah. to those people. Don't compare yourself to the people that are around you or your friends or whoever. That's not who's getting the jobs. You need to compare yourself to people who are making money because that's the only way you'll get there. And it doesn't matter if these people making money are like lower end or whatever. You're not better than them yet. So work at it and just create a ladder and be like, okay, I did this and now I'm going to do this. It's like, if you have to, you can draw like a tier thing on, on your wall or keep a spreadsheet and be like, these are my goals and break it down. These are the steps I would take to get there. And the, the, you know, like people do that in video games all the time, treat it like a game. Just be like, if I get to here, I'll make this much money. It'll make my life this much better. Okay. What's the next goal after that? And then you just like build this structure and talk to people. It's the same thing as seeing red in the room and focusing on that. If you're focused on opportunities, yeah. you'll see it everywhere. And when you talk to somebody who does the things that you want to do, you're more likely to ask questions regarding the things that you have in line with your goals. It's like, and then people will maybe help you along because artists are generally helpful people. So like, you know, they all remember being not great. And uh, yeah, I mean, you continue in that, progression for a while until you hit a wall and then you kind of have to identify what you're doing like i said you pigeonhole and you're you're just fantasy artist man and it's like oh i didn't want to be that i didn't that's not all i wanted to be i have so many ideas like i said it's like i'm a big fan of like anime i'm never going to get paid to do that like that'll never happen so like how do you make things like that happen that's when you have to take some risks and that'll lead to even bigger opportunities if you do them well so like for instance, right. um, I needed to change. It's like if people put you in a box and they say, you're this artist, like maybe you want to be that. Maybe you want to be the best at that. Like you look at people like Paul Bonner or, you know, Donato. And it's like they don't it doesn't seem like they want to do other stuff like they love that. And that's perfectly fine. And you can fight there and keep growing. But for me, I always got so bored doing one thing and I felt like I was limited because I stopped finding joy in it. So it was like, OK, you stop finding joy. You're not necessarily great at drawing. You know your weaknesses and you know where you don't want to be. So let's try something different. So the first thing I did okay. was like Ninja Turtles stuff to like yeah. break the mold of like, like use the skills that I've learned, but do something different, something I enjoy. You know, I can't really draw well, yet, but I can paint. You're you're an oddball, Dave, because you say all of that, but then I look at I look at the Lichman work and it's all contour drawings with painting over it. I look at the Logan poster and it's a realistic painting. And then some of the other work, your magic work is, you know, I consider it very um expected magic paintings, but they're yeah. done on an on an extremely talented level your level of re realistic painting is very strong but then your comic style is also very strong you're in a you're in a really weird place man of in the in between <laughs> yeah well that's where i like to be like i like to do things that are different i have like add in that way where like i i don't just want to do one thing forever that's boring as fuck like to i agree totally yeah, it's like to switch things up and constantly challenge yourself. That's the only way to grow, in my opinion. It's like, you know, it's what's interesting about something like MMA. It's like watching different styles fight and compete and be like, what's the best? Like, what's the best for you? Like, where do you excel? And it's like, and how do you compete against this thing? And it's almost like you're doing that, like the octagon is in your head and you're like taking these different styles and putting them together and like fighting. Like, what's going to come of That's this? Like, it's going to be great. And, no, that's a great point that you make because in your tutorials, you also talk about, you know, you're doing these tutorials because you want to help, but also you want people just to take a piece here and there that applies to their work. Yeah. Uh, like you're talking about in the Octagon. You see that style, you like it, take a little piece, and right. it's the same in, in what you're doing. And that was a great point I think you made was just taking little pieces and 
uh, challenging yourself to accomplish them. Right. Like you introduce different things. Like if you get, like if you, if you carve a, nor a neural pathway in your brain to travel down and you, you understand that your brain will start doing that mindlessly. Like you'll start being like, oh, I'm doing painting. Then you go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, like you just go like straight down a line of steps that you know on how to get to the end. But the way that you start to create new paths is to challenge yourself with things you're uncomfortable with. And it might hurt, but that's how you get better is you go like, let's introduce something totally different that you don't understand. Let's start doing comic books. It's like you don't understand the composition of a comic. Pacing. How do you pace a script? It's like, and then writing. How do you, how do you write a book that has an arc that works? Like, how do you do any of that? And that right. becomes painful, but it's growth. And then it all feeds back into the other stuff that you do. So when you come back to painting, for instance, after doing all this stuff, like you go down a different path now because you have all this new information. It's not the same ground you're treading over and over and over. And that, I think that's well, that how you create your own way through whatever you do, because, you know, your your path shouldn't be the one that everybody else goes down. It's not yours. Yes. All right. <laughs> we usually ask for for advice at the end, but uh, I think this has been a real roller coaster of good advice from Dave. Um, you guys Absolutely. heard it here first. Dave wants to get in the octagon with you. Yeah, I want to kill somebody. He wants to kill somebody. He's got a lot of rage, and he needs to express it. <laughs> if anybody's out there with a family, you better keep them inside because I'm going to murder him. Dave is coming directly for you me. and your family. Yeah, exactly. All right. Watch that's, out. That's our time. Dave, thanks for joining us. It's been, man, it's been a real pleasure. I learned a lot. I got I to gotta re-listen to this one. Uh, it's no been problem. great, Dave. If you'd be willing to come back, we'd be happy to have you. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be down. Just yeah. let me know. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's fun. I always like talking about this stuff. It's what I think about all the time. So, yeah, just kind yeah. of run in my mouth, and someday I <laughs> get shot. <laughs> or nah, the other way I think you're, I think you're safe, man. Most of us like you. I hope so. All right. Safe. We'll see you next week. Thanks for see hanging you. out, Dave. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week, as yeah. Alan said. Goodbye. <laughs>